Good afternoon. Welcome to session two uh, of the Enhancing School Capacity to Address Youth Violence Orientation Session. Um, again, I'm James Stark uh, with Local Initiative Support Corporation Safety and Justice Team. We are your TTA providers. Uh, if you don't know what TTA is or what TTP TTA providers are, you are in the right spot. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, shortly. Um, just to review the agenda, um, this is again, like I said, uh, session two. Last week we had Scott Pestridge and OJJDP share a little bit about uh, them, the, their, their agency, uh, introduced their, their program team, spoke a little bit about the programmatic goals and reporting requirements. Uh, and today we're gonna focus on training and technical assistance, who we are, what we're gonna do, um, and again, the most important part, uh, to build that community of practice. Uh, I think last week it was really uh, exciting, I know, for our team to hear the energy and the passion and excitement uh, from your sites about what you all are doing, uh, but also to understand that you all are not alone, that there are a group of 23 of you um, that are going to be uh, joined together on this three-year journey, uh, and we're going to learn from each other. Um, you know, hopefully you'll learn from us, from our subject matter experts that um, are available to you, uh, but also we'll learn from the innovative work that you all are doing. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, first, uh, you all might be asking, all right, well, who is LISC? What is LISC? Um, what is this training and technical assistance all about? So I'll, I'll briefly talk a little bit about who we are. Um, Local Initiative Support Corporation, that's what LISC stands for. Um, we are an investor, a capacity builder, a convener, uh, and an innovator. So you know, basically we're, we're a national uh, nonprofit that works through a network of local offices and community partners to provide loans, grants, equity investments, and our team's favorite, tailored technical assistance. Uh, we provide comprehensive community and economic investments in areas such as housing, businesses, safety, public spaces, schools, health centers, and more that catalyze opportunities and communities nationwide. So basically, you know, to simplify things, um, government, foundations, and for-profit companies have capital, money, resources, um, residents and local or institutions like yourselves, you all understand the need in your communities. And LISC helps bridge that gap by offering the relationships and experience to assist community organizations in attracting the kind of resources that will allow them to do their best work. Um, our reach, as you can see on the screen here, uh, is far and wide. We have local offices in 38 cities across the U.S., uh, we also have a rural team that covers 2,400 counties crisscrossing 49 states and Puerto Rico. We have 12 national teams, uh, including affordable housing, economic development, education, health, sports and rec, and our team, safety and justice. So for many of you, um, you're not going to only have direct connections with your safety and justice team, but you're also going to have opportunities to connect with local offices that have direct ties to your community and with national teams that have specific areas of expertise. So um, a little bit more background on our safety and justice team. Um, while LISC is uh, a little over 40 years old, uh, the safety and justice team is the first uh, of those national teams. Um, we started about 20 to 25 years ago. Uh, I think as, as folks understand, you know, if you're doing anything in the community, one of the most important aspects of that is for the community members to feel safe. And as LISC was growing, um, you know, that was a priority. And so we're honored to be, you know, the first of the, the national teams. Our vision, our say our team's vision, um, is that we imagine a world where all residents feel safe, respected, and empowered in the places they live work, learn, and play. We envision a society where poverty is not criminalized, where neighbors are able to ensure the safety of their own communities and where those opportunities are abundant and accessible. 
Um, I want, also want to share with you um, some of our values. I just want you kind of to get a sense of who you all are working with and you know, kind of where we come at this work from. Um, so you know, our, our values, we pursue equity and inclusion. So we understand that there's a deliberate effort is required to overcome structural racism. Our work to pursue equity and inclusion must include the expertise of those with lived experience and those directly impacted by the systems we seek to improve. We center community in place. Local solutions are anchored in specific place and depend on the participation of empowered, connected residents. We build partnerships. And I think that's gonna be important for this work, obviously. Residents, schools, nonprofit, businesses, and law enforcement, you all bring vital strengths and it's important for you all to be at the table when decisions are getting made to impact the lives of, of students and, and, and residents in your community. We respect evidence, data and documented experience allows us to identify and scale strategies that work and rigorous, rigorous evaluation keeps efforts on track. We work towards comprehensive revitalization uh, safety and justice are independent with all elements of community well-being. We want to weave solutions into the fabric of holistic change efforts. And to that end, we want to cultivate sustainability. Uh, change takes time. We know this grant program, we have three years, um, but we don't want this work to end when the grant period ends. We want this work to continue. We want to learn from best practices. Um, so we want to invest in building up the community's people and institutions so that we can catalyze and build upon the efforts uh, that you all are creating in the years to come. Uh, in, in, in the past dozen or so years, we've worked with federal partners on several major TTA projects and grant programs. Um, through this work, we've supported community-centered safety strategies in over 100 localities across this country, ranging from large urban areas to smaller cities to rural and tribal communities. Uh, we were excited when we saw this cohort of sites because we have familiarity with many of the localities where you'll be doing work. And hopefully we'll be able to use those earlier connections and collaborations to support your efforts. We're also engaged in several other TTA projects with the federal government, as well as, as, well as with organizations such as Every Time for Gun Safety and research institu institutions, where we'll be pulling knowledge and resources to support you and your projects and sometimes we may even ask you to present and share how your innovative projects have forged pathways to reduce student violence, engage parents and local stakeholders to create uh, safer schools and a safer community for your youth. Uh, I'll be having the rest of our TTA introduce themselves in a few minutes and share some examples uh, of the TTA projects they've supported but I first wanted to jump into how we are gonna support you through this grant project. So um, if I was fancy enough, I'd probably have a, 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 a quick little survey on the, the, this webinar asking how many have already had TTA, but alas, we'll do that in uh, our conversations, our team's conversations with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, but for some of you, you all have, maybe been familiar with TTA, uh, and some of you may not be. So we'll start from square one, um, and we define TTA as the planning, development, and delivery of activities designed to achieve specific learning objectives, resolve problems, and foster the application of innovative approaches. So basically, in a nutshell, we'll be working with you to brainstorm ideas, review evidence-based and evidence-informed strategies and programs, and connect you with the on the ground people and organizations that are doing innovative work in this field. So to help us prioritize our efforts, we'll first use a TTA assessment tool, which we've created, um, which will allow you the opportunity to share with us where you feel your site strengths are and where areas of opportunity lie. Then through regular calls with your TTA lead, we'll compare that with what you told us uh, and what we're hearing from you in those calls and create TTA plans. These plans are then delivered through two buckets of work, macro level TTA and micro TTA. So macro TTA is, is basically working across your sites. Um, so this is providing training and technical assistance um, based upon what we've heard from you um, uh, through practical resources, such as webinars, fact sheets, highlights from the field. 
Um, so you should expect, uh, you know, a, a, a regular ongoing webinars that you'll be have access to. Um, we want to complement that with some fact sheets, some you know, kind of bite-sized information that you all can can utilize, um, as well as highlights from the field. So we want to capture what's working and some innovative things that we're seeing. Uh, and be able to share that uh, across all the sites. We're going to also, um, you know, provide research and best practices from the field. So we'll look to be able to capture uh, templates, tools and templates, resource tools, um, to be able to make sure that you all know that you don't necessarily have to replicate the wheel. So if you all are looking for data capture systems or um, you know, like how do I how do I best engage a specific partner in my efforts? If we already have documents or we know of documents that are out there that we can provide support to uh, the field, we're going to share those. Um, uh, and we'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how we're going to share those uh, in just a second. We're also going to, um, you know, I think the most important thing about this kind of the macro level TTA is the, the peer networking. So we're going to create this community of practice. Um, as part of the community of practice, we're going to create ask the expert sessions and office hours where you'll have access to either folks in our team uh, or folks in the field that have been doing work in the community with students, with schools, with community based partners uh, to address youth violence, victimization and create uh, a safer environment for, for our students. And so, you know, those are going to be sessions where you can, you know, you can pop in if you have questions, um, you know, ask questions or, you know, just listen in. Um, you, there might be a couple of them where you're like, all right, well, this this expert doesn't necessarily apply to the work I'm doing, so I'm going to skip that. Um, that's that's more than fine. Uh, but throughout all of this, we're going to record this. We're going to um, uh, you know, make sure it's on um, our ESC AYV website. Um, I think we'll provide the link to that uh, at the end, at some point during this webinar, so you, you have access to that. Um, we're also going to um, utilize a tool called Basecamp. So Basecamp is, is a, a platform where you all can share information with each other. You can upload tools that you all are using. Um, it's also a, a, a way for us to communicate across all the sites to let you know about upcoming um, uh, webinars that maybe that we aren't doing that might but might be apl applicable to what you all might be interested in or conferences or you know other types of events uh that might make sense for you all uh to consider attending so that's going to be the the macro level tta uh and then there's micro level tta and, and micro level tta is, is basically that the tailored uh training and tango assistance for your sites um, so again, we're going to be using those TTA tools. Um, we're going to work with you, create a, a TTA plan. So basically prioritizing, you know, what are, where are some, some areas um, where you're really interested in, in getting information uh, in the next three to six to nine months, uh, and we'll be able to connect you to resources to be able to address those uh, opportunities that you've identified. Uh, and through that, uh, we'll also be connecting you with subject matter experts. So subject matter experts are those individuals that we're going to be partnering with, our, our safety and justice team are going to be partnering with, um, that have specialized knowledge uh, of, of various topics. So, um, you know, it could be uh, an organization that uh, has a long experience in restorative justice or mentoring um, or behavioral health or um, setting up uh, a safe passage program to make sure that the routes from school to uh, from home to school are safe. Um, so we'll be able to connect you with those subject matter experts. And I want to just highlight those are free. Yes, free. Not many things in life are free, but subject matter experts are free. So if you have folks that you're like, you know, I'd really love to be able to connect with this organization, um, and we'll we'll let you know uh, in our individual calls to you later on what these organizations are and what they'll be providing. Um, but you know, if 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 it interests you, um, we will provide those connections for you um, to not only have calls virtually, um, but hopefully also get out to your sites as well. Um, we're also uh, we'll be providing regular and as needed calls 
uh, with your TTA lead. So I, you know, we're, we're going to be, um, every one of you is, is going to have a, a TTA lead. Um, hopefully you all have uh, at least had an opportunity to check in with them prior to this uh, orientation session. And we're starting to set up regular calls with, with you. We'll also have site visits. Um, I think as much as virtual um, meetings are great, uh, it's so much better to meet in person, to be able to walk the schools and go through the community and meet the partners that you are engaged with. That really helps us to be able to provide better support for you. Uh, it also helps you to learn a little bit about us and how we work. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, towards the end of the grant program, we want to be able to create uh, to help you create site sustainability plans. So as the grant period ends, you know, that this work doesn't conclude. So, you know, again, um, what should you expect? You know, how do I utilize this TTA? This is a collaborative process. You know, we're going to hear from you. We want to understand what uh, what tools um, uh, get information to you in the best way. So, you know, if you guys are, are, are getting these webinars and you're like, oh, webinars are good, but, you know, we would really like something that is, you know, you know, a five to 10 minute um, quick hit on a specific topic, or we want more ask the expert sessions where we can talk to specific individuals. We will listen to you and we will course correct. Um, so, you know, we'll, what, what should you expect? The TTA assessment, regular interactions with your TTA lead. Um, you'll have opportunities to engage the, the website that I'll be sharing with you shortly. Um, a peer networking community of practice. And again, this access to subject matter experts who again are free. Uh, all right, so some of the topics that you'll have access to, um, you know, we'll, we'll be, and this is just, you know, a, a very early list. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more topics that we'll, we'll be uh, highlighting, uh, but some of them include engaging your community members and fostering community engagement. What does local coordination of ESC AYB efforts look like? How do we use data to identify areas of opportunity in evidence-informed solutions? Who are the right partners? Are we Do we have the right partners and are we working effectively in collaboration? Uh, are we planning and implementing our, our grant approaches that integrate with other community efforts? And are we evaluating and sustaining our, our efforts? You know, other topics, like I said before, could include, you know, how do we address trauma, community trauma, individual trauma, um, the collective trauma uh, of violence. Um, we just, uh, some of you were able to uh, participate. We just, on, a, on a, a recent webinar we had for another grant program on wellness rooms. You know, what are wellness rooms? How do they impact uh, and support schools? Um, restorative justice, mentoring, um, engaging in violence intervention organizations or engaging in criminal justice organizations. Um, so a lot of topics, a lot of uh, opportunities. Um, and you know we're we're very much looking forward to working with you uh, at the macro level, but uh, also uh, more importantly on that that micro tailored TTA level. So I'm going to introduce um, our other TTA leads, um, and they're going to have um, let's see, uh, yeah, about a minute or two minutes. I say two minutes each. Um, just to share a little bit about who they are and, and maybe give an example um, of some of the, the TTA that you all have provided in the past. So I'm going to start with you, Matt, and then after Matt, um, uh, you can toss it over to LeVar. Sure. Thanks, James. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I'm Matt Perkins. I'm a program director in the Safety and Justice National Team, joining you today from Rockville, Maryland, outside of D.C., um, so I have been providing TA at the federal level for about 20 years now, um, mostly to DOJ, also to HUD, um, and doing so in areas around community-based violence prevention and um, environmental approaches to violence prevention. Um, an example of what TA can look like for the last couple of years, I've been working with Lompoc Unified School District in Central California there in Santa Barbara County, about an hour plus away from the city of Santa Barbara. Um, it's a medium-sized city surrounded by agricultural fields, which means a lot of seasonal workers, um, home to 
Vandenberg Air Force Base and a federal prison. Uh, they've had longstanding issues of violence uh, in the community. And, and so LUSD as a school system was looking how they can comprehensively address it both inside and outside school properties. Um, they were great users, users of kind of the generalized TA. Uh, we got to put them in touch with the community-based public safety collective to do a quick assessment of their community balance intervention, uh, potential strategies of use to them. Um, mostly their work with us has revolved around building a full community partnership to address violence prevention. And in that work, uh, we connected them with a subject matter expert, Sandra Spadas um, from Southern California, who had um, worked with us years before running a, a different DOJ grant and currently works as a director of engagement for a large nonprofit in Southern California. So she's been working with them almost two years now about how to create lasting community partnerships and talking about, uh, as James did, kind of the comprehensive uh, partnerships that we have. We were also able to bring a grant from Every Town for Gun Safety to Lompoc for school for partnerships with a, a school-based um, urban gardening program um, because the, the plans they had for the city of Santa Barbara fell through, so we were able to steer them towards our partners in Lompoc. And that's one example of what it can look like in the bar. I will turn it to you. So I'm assuming I'm off mute. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good to be here with you today. Um, just to reiterate a little bit of what uh, James mentioned earlier, I unfortunately was unable to attend the first session, but definitely heard uh, that you guys are a very dynamic group and uh, we definitely appreciate that. I always tell people uh, TA, <clears throat> excuse me, TA is one of those processes where you get out of it what you put into it, right? Uh, so you definitely have to be proactive in taking advantage of uh, a lot of those offerings that James just uh, went over with you. Um, so definitely good to be here with you guys today. <clears throat> um, as mentioned, my name is LeVar Michael, Senior Program Officer with the List Safety and Justice team. Uh, I've been with the team now going on seven years. Uh, and throughout that time, uh, have worked uh, with a number of different partners and jurisdictions throughout the country uh, to advance public safety initiatives uh, through the TA that we provide. Uh, before coming here uh, to work here at LIST, uh, and before actually even entering uh, the space of, of public safety, um, I started my career uh, in uh, youth counseling, actually, and, and worked in social services for a number of years. Uh, I then went on to work as a community organizer, and it was through that organizing work uh, that sort of led me into the field of public safety. Uh, and it was kind of uh, by, by happenstance, uh, a very traumatic uh, incident occurred in the community I was working in. Uh, and we knew right away that, you know, to be responsive to that community, we needed to really focus our efforts on, on public safety initiatives. Uh, that got me involved in uh, local public safety initiatives, uh, which uh, eventually went on to um, helping to be a co-founder of one of the first gang prevention initiatives in South Central Pennsylvania, uh, and then went on to do some work uh, through the Communities That Care initiative, which I'm sure many of you uh, are familiar with, um, and, and doing some youth violence prevention work. Uh, eventually, I uh, relocated here to the great city of Baltimore, where I reside now, uh, and served uh, for a number of years in what was at the time the Baltimore City's Mayor's Office uh, for Criminal Justice, uh, and then eventually served as the Baltimore City's Violence Reduction Manager. Uh, so definitely have been doing this work uh, for, for quite a while now. Uh, just a, a quick example of a way that uh, uh, one site that we work with took advantage of our, our TA offerings. Um, as many of you know, when you're working projects like this, 
uh, you know, things don't always go smoothly, right? Um, there are hiccups, there are bumps in the road. Uh, we had one site in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., uh, that uh, had a started to experience a transition in, in partnership, right? Uh, one of the main organizations they worked with uh, was shutting down and it really threatened to derail their, their entire project. Uh, but we immediately uh, deployed in, uh, worked very closely, cobbled together our TA team, uh, worked very closely with subject matter experts who were deployed to the site identified, uh, worked with the team to identify local partners who could sort of fill in the gap, uh, worked very uh, for a very long period of time uh, to refocus the project, uh, to identify additional planning that was needed, uh, to organize, to restructure their, their project, uh, and really aided the SME that was deployed there to focus on partnership development and project design. Uh, and we did that work, as I mentioned, for a couple of months uh, and eventually got that site to a point where uh, at you know one of their last site visits that they had, we invited folks from DOJ uh, to, to come out with us to that site visit. And it was just amazing for all of us to see how a site that once was facing the possibility of having to end their project uh, due to the TA and due to their proactiveness in, in really reaching out for assistance, were able to turn that around and keep their project on track and actually turn out a, a pretty impressive uh, project. Uh, so again, TA is all about what you put into it. Uh, we're here to help you. Uh, please take advantage. Like James said, this is uh, this is some free services that are being provided. So, uh, but good to be here with you. And James, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Matt Navarre. We also have other members of our team that uh, will likely come in and join um, at, at other points of time. So uh, you probably hear from from others of our team uh, at later um, later events. So I dropped in the, the, the chat um, a link about LISC. So if you want a little bit more information about LISC, the organization, uh, you can check out that first link. Uh, the second link I provided uh, focuses on our safety and justice team. Um, if you want to just take a picture, use a QR code, um, this will take us take you to some resources that we've provided. Um, so uh, through many of our grant programs, we provide resource tools. You can check those out on that uh, QR code. And again, um, you'll have access to this all at another time when um, we post the recording and the PowerPoint deck. Um, so now to the fun part, just one quick thing before we get to the fun part, the peer, the peer sharing call uh, information. Um, at, as we end this um, session two, I'm going to be asking you all to complete a, a survey tool. Um, it's a very quick, I think, six or seven questions where you just drop down, you just click a, click your response. Um, so I'll, I'm going to ask you to do that at the very end. Um, but this is the fun part where we're going to go through the, the, site, the uh, 12 sites so that we had I think we had 11 that presented last week and we're going to have 12 that present this week uh and again uh intros as i'm dropping in the chat introduce your key partners introduce um or highlight the, the population of students who plan to engage identify the core strategies you're going to be implementing um and uh if you all are not on camera at, you don't have to be on camera while others are presenting but when you are presenting if you just jump on camera so we can all see you that would be terrific. Uh, and I will give you all kind of the, the countdown, um, uh, two minutes, one minute, and time's up, because uh, we do have a lot of folks to cover. Uh, and if we do have time at the end, we'll, um, we'll allow you all to uh, um, ask questions or give us some of your thoughts. Um, so with that, um, I am going to introduce the school board of Manatee County in Bradenton, Florida. Maybe. Going once. Bradenton, Florida. That's too bad. I just talked to them yesterday. 
we have a really great program too set up. All right. Well, I guess we will put them on hold. Um, we next have the Boys and Girls Club of the Gulf Coast in Gulfport, Mississippi. Yes, I'm here. I'm logging on um, through my computer, but I guess I can just do it through my phone to start with. There you go. Okay. okay, can you guys see me? We sure can. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Morgan. Um, I am the Senior Director of Operations for the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Gulf Coast. Um, we have six club sites here. We're um, based out of Gulfport, Mississippi, right on the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and for our project, it's called the Impact Mentoring Program. And it's kind of play on the word PACT. So um, it's based off of the three doctors. I don't know if anyone is familiar with the story of the three doctors. They were um, three young African-American boys in Newark, New Jersey, grew up in a crime-ridden, um, impoverished community, and they made a pact that they were going to graduate from high school, they were going to go to college, and they were going to become doctors, and they did it. And so they spoke at one of our national conferences, and it was just... It was a life changing um, seminar. And so we got together and we started thinking about it. And um, we developed the impact mentoring program about two years ago and have been looking for funding since then. And so um, what we did for this project, we identified three school districts um, in our service area um, that have high levels of um, behavior incidences that have high levels of youth that um, qualify for free or reduced lunch. Um, and we're targeting kids that um, are outside of our normal everyday program. So um, when we got together with our stakeholders and um, some community partners, there were a lot of questions about, you know, who are there any kids that are too bad for the program that, you know, you just can't serve. And we said, nope, those are the ones we want. So um, as of now, our goal is um, to serve 150 youth. And so we identified two schools within three districts here on the Gulf Coast. And um, we hired staff um, specifically for the program. So we have an impact mentoring director um, that is full-time position and oversees three impact coordinators. And every day they are going inside of the schools. They are meeting with children, meeting with teachers, Teachers, meeting with parents, um, discussing issues. Each child, of course, has a case file um, where they've identified goals um, that they have for themselves. Um, each of our children are ACE tested. That's adverse childhood experiences. Um, if you're not familiar, we've um, contracted out with a, um, a psychotherapist that is coming in to making sure that those are valid results um, and that we can connect to the appropriate resources. Um, and then as part of their membership to the impact program, they become members of Boys and Girls Club. So they're free to come into the clubs in the afternoon time. And at each three of our club sites, one inside of each district, we've also hired a teen coordinator um, to be to meet them once they get to the club. And so they're getting programs that are evidence-based programs through Boys and Girls Clubs America, such as Youth for Unity, which talks a lot about understanding differences, conflict resolution. Um, they're getting programs um, like Project Learn, which is an academic success and reinforcement. And they're coming in and they're getting um, paired with mentors. And so um, adult, volunteer mentors and we've what we've done is separated them into career clusters so they're matched with their mentor based on their career aspiration so we've had our first match day um, and it kind of for lack of a better term was like speed dating for a mentor and so um, we came in and we separated our mentors out um, according to their career cluster and then we separated mentees out based on what their interest inventory um, uh, said in their intake form. What, you know, what do you think you might want to be? And so this is where the other play on the word pact comes in. So there's three approaches to our mentoring. We have the traditional one-on-one -on -one adult and youth mentor, but then we have this peer-to-peer -peer mentoring because, you know, that's what gangs are based off of, or is that peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. And um, so they come in and they make a pact with their mentor and with their peers. And they come in in this group called a pact 
team. Um, and they're mentored based off of their career interests. So uh, for example, we have one that's a healthcare group. There's three to four kids in the group and they're matched with a nurse. And each of these kids want to be um, a nurse, a doctor, um, a radiologist, something in that healthcare field. So they're matched with someone who um, has that knowledge and has those resources to be able to help them um, further into their career. And of course, like everyone else, we have the multidisciplinary team that's offering services like mental health, um, homelessness, um, food security, and the list goes on and on and on. But that's kind of a, a basic rundown. I could probably go on for four more minutes, but that's a basic rundown of the program. Morgan, that was awesome. Loved it. That sounds like a really interesting and fun program. So looking forward to hearing how that goes. Thank you. All right. This is LeVar's favorite group because they are from the great city of Baltimore, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Metropolitan Baltimore. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. Thank you all. I appreciate you. My name is Contavious Jones. And as the gentleman said, I'm with the Boys and Girls Club Metropolitan Baltimore. Um, the club that we're centering our workout for this grant will be on the Eastern Shore in Cambridge, Maryland. So that's uh, right, on the, right on the shore of uh, the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, and my team that are on the call right now are Anna Piccarelli. She's a regional director of the Eastern Shore. Um, and then we have Dana Benjamin Allen and Cassandra Tavares. So they'll be helping with data and reporting. Um, we're working on hiring a social worker, which will be involved with this work or a behavioral specialist. So um, that posting is out there. If you all know anybody in the Maryland area or on the Eastern Shore uh, with that skill set, definitely let us know. Um, and I'll give you some overall demographics about the area we serve and the, and the students that we serve, the community we serve. Uh, we're in Cambridge, Maryland, as I mentioned. Uh, we're about, Cambridge is about, I don't know, hour, 45 minutes from Baltimore, hour and a half from Baltimore. Uh, we primarily serve the African-American community. We mostly work with students that attend uh, two local elementary schools and a middle school. So that's where we will be targeting our work. Uh, and our club currently has around 45 youth. Um, some of the challenges that we face in this, in this community uh, are high levels of violence in and out of school, high levels of school truancy, um, and increasing gang activity among the youth. Uh, and so those are the things that are a really plaguing the community and we wanna try to target that with our programming and our work. Um, since January, there's been 13 murders in the community of Cambridge um, and numerous fights and incidents of violence. Uh, the school district is experiencing alarming levels of violence and discipline referrals. Uh, throughout the district, there have there've been about uh, a thousand incidents of violence uh, since the beginning of the year. There's approximately 5,000 students in the district. So that gives you kind of an overview of, again, how, how much violence is um, trickled in from the community um, into the schools. Um, Cambridge, Maryland is, is known as uh, mini Baltimore. There's as much violent crime there um, as per capita as Baltimore. So, you know, there's a lot going on in this small community. So on the positive side, like our plan to address these issues, these challenges, our general goals are to improve communication between local orgs, families, and the local school system, to coordinate local efforts and events to address community challenges, to educate, to educate stakeholders on the causes of violence and truancy, and then to empower all stakeholders with the knowledge and resources necessary to create significant change. Um, the biggest thing I'm excited about with this effort, uh, I know many of you on this call are in the nonprofit realm, and we've noticed that there's a lot of nonprofits doing good, but they're not doing good in tandem with each other. So uh, again, uh, the, the phrase, not reinvent the wheel or work against ourselves, our aim is to coordinate the efforts to um, pool resources and try to target specific issues, the greatest issues in the community together. Um, our kind of overall aim is to decrease violence and increase school attendance uh, through community collaboration, uh, intentional programming, and the cultivation of stronger relationships between students, parents, and community stakeholders. Um, we've noticed uh, through the data that we've been able to collect so far that about five to 10% of the students cause about 90 to 95% of the dis discipline issues. So we wanna focus our efforts um, on students and families that, that show the greatest needs and just take a full wrap approach, which again, we know that's a hot button topic, but, um, and it's hard to do as one entity, but as a community of organizations, you know, wherever a community has a strong suit, we target that family or that student to get the resources um, and services there. 
Uh, currently, we are in the initial stages um, of our work. So just doing introductions with stakeholders and parents, working on just basic relationship building. Um, in communities like this and communities like the ones we all serve, you can't just barge in and assume that they want your services or your help um, or will learn from you. It's It has to be relationship-based. So I've um, just been meeting people. We've been meeting people, having conversations, um, listening to their input, listening to their concerns. Um, we're doing a lot of data and info collection um, and also doing the needs and threat assessments, just building those um, assessments so we can have, create a baseline to see where we can you know, move to move towards growth. Um, our efforts and programming uh, will be student, family, and partner um, organization driven. So taking inputs from the folks who are um, mostly impacted and, and entrenched in the work. Um, we already have secured MOUs um, with the mediation organization, uh, with a behavioral and mental health service org, and a community youth focused educational center. And just a couple more items. What's my time looking like? About 30 more seconds. Yes, let's go. All right. <laughs> Some examples of our planned actions, programming and training. So we want to do trauma training. We know that trauma, um, especially in these community communities, are, it's cyclical, right? It's generational trauma. So um, educating our stakeholders, families, students about the effects of trauma on development and behavior is essential. Uh, we're going to do some SEL training, um, so restorative training, uh, brain science. We're going to try to create better relationships with the school system and the families. So we've come up with ideas for you know, parent-teacher connection events, dinners, discussions, workshops. Um, we wanna partner with the local law enforcement, right? To try to better that relationship between the community and law enforcement. And then of course, um, full wrap services for the parents, parent support, parent input, um, parent panels and workshops. And that is my time. Perfect, right on. <clears throat> that uh, sounds amazing. Um, you are speaking our language and definitely the language of this grant program. So um, can't wait to hear how things go in, in Cambridge. All right, the Oneida Nation in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, everybody, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Awesome, hi, I'm Mandy Schneider. Um, I work for the Oneida Nation, specifically the Oneida Nation Police Department, and I am stationed inside of their school district. It took us a long time to get here, and the program that we're utilizing this grant for is called the Yeti Yatanuha, which in Oneida means we are watching over them. Um, we're the Alternative Education Program. Um, we started in 2013. My colleague and I, who is a part of this, she's not here right now, um, this grant was thrown in our lap and we took it with the help of Artley Skinnador. He is the principal and created this alternative education, which includes not only credit recovery, tutoring, but the social emotional, the conflict resolution, the coping skills, the large group, the small group, um, all of these different components to help the students that attend the United Nations school system um, succeed. Um, Cause with, um, what's going on in the reservation. We have violence. Um, my actual job title is gang task force coordinator. So we do have a um, gang issue on the reservation as well as um, opioid problems, um, incarcerated parents, um, the whole nine yards. So in 2013 is when our program started is when we were taking the baby steps. So what this grant is going to do is it's gonna help us further our reach um, into the community, further our reach into the school system, and um, get to the core of what's going on with our families. Um, so that's kind of a um, overview of what this grant is going to help our program do. Um, so when I'm talking about, um, let me see my list here, excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we do. And our team consists of, now we put together a special team and we all work together anyway, but this grant allowed us to come together more closely um, as our multi multidisciplinary team to dig deeper into the community. And that exists of, I mentioned him before, Arlie Skindador. He's our high school principal, athletic director and cultural leader within the school and outside in the community. So he is a huge part of this program. He's a huge part of why this grant came to fruition for us. Um, he has definitely been our biggest ally and cheerleader through all of this. Um, Sarah Wunderlich, she is my partner in crime. We have been 
sludging through the mud towards our goals for forever together. Um, she is the AT manager. Uh, she is the core of the cultural and identity part of the program that we do for all the children that we uh, come in contact with as well as their families. Because um, through generational trauma and through cycles of hopelessness, sometimes the, the culture gets lost. And you would be amazed what happens when a student realizes who they are and that identity. And then all of a sudden they just, the changes start to occur. Um, and Sarah is by far amazing at that. Um, she's also in charge of our credit recovery portion of our program um, for our students that are severely credit deficient uh, to earn their core diploma. And she teaches the Oneida Civics for our entire school. So she is a huge asset to the program. Uh, we have uh, our Miss Rebecca Green Blank. She is actually here with me right now. She's right here. She's our social worker. She's our nutritionist. She's our in house therapist. She's running all over the place with us. Um, so, this grant is allowing us to pull her further into the school system and use her expertise. Um, she is beyond a benefit to the program and to all of us in the community. Um, we also have Edward Metoxen. He is our uh, liaison and DARE, Dare officer. Um, he I can't tell you what it's like to have an officer walk into a building and have the kids go toward him and not run the other direction. He is a definite benefit to everything that we do. His insight, his observations throughout the community and with the kids um, really help in developing all the different facets of what we're going to be able to do with this grant. And then last but last, well, at least there's me. Um, I'm Mandy, um, like I said before, my full title is Gang Task Force Coordinator, but I, I really focus on the outreach and intervention which you know focuses on that issue. Um, I run the social emotional, the conflict resolution and the coping groups for the AT program. And I am also one that writes the grants and coordinates them. So that is our little core team that are gonna be working towards um, the intervention and prevention uh, piece of our AT program that this grant is gonna allow us to do. Um, and specifically, um, so I don't run out of time, um, we are, we are looking to implement full-on trauma-informed resilience-oriented schools within our little school district um, to get all staff, all administration on the same page as how to work with the students. We're coming up with a referral plan so that the kids that need us get to us as quickly as possible. Um, we are starting targeted outreach. We have a CST, a wraparound grant that we're gonna also use to help push this grant forward to get the wraparound help that our students and families need. Because one student, you got little siblings, you got older siblings, there's a lot going on in their families. So that will allow us to push that forward. Um, and then also implementing that sort restorative justice practices because suspensions and expulsions, they don't work. You have to work with the kids from where they're at with their families and figure out what's going to make them passionate about school and um, succeeding in life. So not sure how much time I have left, but that is oh, what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is what uh, our little group is. That is what we're planning to do with our grant. Um, and we're extremely excited to get moving forward with it. Sounds Thank good. You. Thank you so much, Mandy. Next, uh, and I I'm apologize in advance for likely pronouncing this wrong, uh, the Shoshone Paiute tribe from Aohi, Nevada. Going once. Going twice. All right. We'll we'll get to y'all later. All right. Um, next from Austin, Texas, the Council on At Risk Youth. Hi, I'm Nicole Gerard. I'm program director with the Council on At Risk Youth. And on here we also have Shana Fox, our executive director, and Randa Simpson, our administrative director. Um, with this grant, um, we will be going into <clears throat> excuse me. Well, first, let me tell you about the population that we serve. So we work in middle schools and high schools in the greater Austin area, um, specifically Title I schools with a large at-risk community. And we, with this grant, we have staff going full-time into three schools, um, I believe three middle schools for this grant. And our staff, per, and they're mental health professionals, and they provide group and individual services to a large cohort of students. We specifically work with students that are involved in the school discipline system, 
Um, and we are looking to disrupt that school to prison pipeline where they become involved in the school discipline system and they're much more likely to be involved in the juvenile justice system. So we are working um, on the prevention side with you know, specifically targeted students. Um, in our group setting, we use a curriculum called aggression replacement training. It's a nationally recognized evidence-based curriculum that focuses on anger management, social skills, and moral reasoning. And through these, um, through these different um, areas that we work on, we are looking to build up our students' platform or foundation of skills and um, emotional understanding and the right vocabulary to express their needs, express their feelings, to understand themselves and what's going on so that they can then make better decisions. We're looking to improve not only the school environment, but their communities, their homes, um, and their futures and all of that. We also do individual work with our students, going deeper, things that you know we wouldn't go into in the group setting. We're available on campus. Like I said, our staff are full-time on one campus. They become a part of that campus, um, a part of that, <clears throat> excuse me, that family. And whenever there's a crisis on campus or a student outside of their group time or their individual time is having a conflict, they are, our staff are on, um, on campus to respond there in those moments. So it's not the kids coming to us telling us about it the next week when we see them, but we are there in those moments when they're having those big feelings and they're trying to make those decisions. We're there to um, help guide them and reinforce those skills that we were learning in group and individual sessions already. Um, we also do parent involvement, we do service projects, we do you know leadership training, field educational field trips, all the different ways that we can build those relationships. Uh, you know, someone already said very wisely that it's it's all based on the relationships you build with these communities and with these students in order for us to get in there and for them to actually listen to what we have to say. Um, and that's why it's so important with grants like this that we're able to be on the school campus full time. Um, to build those relationships and really be a part of that community. And then we're able to, to see that good work. The, the things that we're trying to, um, the outcomes that we're looking for are reduction in discipline incidents per child on the campus. And then a byproduct of that is they improve their grades and attendance as well, just from not being suspended as much and not having as many conflicts on campus, they're more engaged in their learning and in their futures. And I think that was about it. Oh, you're on mute, James. <laughs> Thank you. I, I forgot that I turned my turned that on. My my 11 year old just came home from school, so he even though my door is closed, he always decides just to pop right in. So uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, you're about to get interrupted by my 11 year old, so we saved you from that. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Next from Atlanta, Georgia, we have. Chris 180, I think. Hello, I am Kristen from Chris 180, different spelling, but um, yeah, Chris 180 is a community-based mental health organization in Atlanta, Georgia, with over 450 employees total sprawled across the metro Atlanta area. Um, to quote, I guess, like something from our mission statement says, our mission is we help children, adults, and families who have experienced trauma change the direction of their lives to become more productive, self-sufficient members of the community. We do this through mental health counseling, training, providing safe housing, and real world skill building. So Chris 180 as a whole does a whole lot of things aimed at serving children and families. And I am here as part of the Chris 180 school-based mental health department. I'm a clinical program manager with our school-based mental health. And I have Brittany Walters is on the call as well. She is my supervisor and the um, vice president of the school-based mental health program. And so school-based mental health, we are the largest program at Chris 180, and we currently serve 76 schools throughout the metro Atlanta area and growing. We're taking on at least four more this summer. And so I'm hearing some overlap in some of the models from what people have said before. But yeah, we really try to have a therapist really embed themselves in the school, partner with the school, have an office in the school building. They provide individual, family, and group therapy services to students who meet criteria for the higher level of care than what maybe a school counselor or um, even the school social worker can provide. And 
we also really are big on wanting to help build trauma informed schools as well. And with that, it we really encourage our therapists to provide parent teacher trainings, offer teacher consultations, attend IEP meetings, help build peace corners, provide on site crisis and de escalation support, conduct skills and psycho ed groups. And that is really where I think this grant has come in at a perfect time because, in order to do that extra, extra things that aren't always billable from Medicaid or insurance that we want to be able to continue to do, we need funding and the schools cannot always offer that. So a big part of this grant is gonna to continue to allow our therapists to really be there on site, be available when a crisis emerges and help deescalate, help coach and consult with teachers and not just have to kind of, you know, do the come see the one kid and then leave. Um, and we are, really seeing a need. I think in Atlanta, you all might have seen this in the news yesterday, but yeah, there's just like across the country, we see a lot of a lot of fights and assault and battery charges for, from kids at school, which often result in expulsions, suspensions, weapons on campus. Um, those are probably the biggest reasons we would love this grant. And then, so in addition to being able to help fund the, the therapist work, we also are hiring two violent, we have hired two violence prevention specialists who are going to kind of function like behavior specialists who will work in conjunction with the therapists on site at the schools. And they will continue to do some of those extra things that sometimes schools need more of. Um, so they'll be doing more small groups, helping build peace corners and peace patrols for recess. They will be doing teacher and parent trainings, attending community resource fairs, and then just really any and all other school-wide interventions that are aimed at preventing and reducing violence in schools. One other cool thing that's just come about is that I think we might be able to send at least our violence prevention specialists and maybe some of our therapists to, a tr to be able to it's called a GREAT training, which stands for Gang Resistance Education and Training. And they would be delivering that in our elementary and maybe the sixth graders. But the goal there would be really trying to target some of these younger kids before maybe it's a little too late with the gang involvement. So Brittany, anything I missed? I'm trying to go with our time. I'm, I'm so proud you nailed it. All right. Yes, and you are uh at least a minute early so bonus points for that <laughs> thank you Kristen. thank you <clears throat> all right we are going to move to the board of cooperative educational services in west nyack new york hi everybody um my name is elizabeth kendall and i am from rockland boces rockland county in new york is about 20 miles outside of new york city um it's the smallest physical county in um, New York State, but also a, a very highly densely populated community. Rockland BOCES, there are BOCES, there's 37 BOCES throughout um, New York State. And we function to serve um, all of the districts in the county and the surrounding counties um, where um, you know, where expenses to run their own programs may be too high we um, build programs to support our school districts. So we, for example, we have a, a very large student services division where we're serving the highest needs um, students in the county. Um, we serve students with um, cognitive and physical disabilities, medical fragility, um, significant um, social and emotional needs. Um, a lot of our students um, coming into our kindergarten programs have already been hospitalized. Um, so these are really high need student populations. Um, post COVID, um, we're seeing a real high increase in, um, in incidences of um, child abuse and neglect. Um, and so our project functions to support students and families um, to you know, to get out of being involved in the system. So um, it's, 
Our project, we, we run a program called the Partnership for Safe and Healthy Youth, which is a multi-sector partnership um, between Rockland BOCES and all of the governmental agencies in Rockland County. So it's a partnership with uh, a formal partnership with the Department of Social Services, the Department of Mental Health, the Department of, um, of Probation, the District Attorney's Office, and we service children who are system multi-system involved. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop for students who have touched multiple systems. So um, a child who may be involved in DSS, who may also be um, in the juvenile justice system, they get referred to the partnership and um, our staff there support the child and their families to make a plan for being, um, you know, to, to become successful, to re-engage in school. And it's a pretty intensive service. And um, we're finding that the original intention for the, for the Partnership for Safe and Healthy Youth was that, um, you know, families would come in, they'd be served for a few weeks and then leave, um, having been connected to resources, we're finding that's not the case, that families stick with us for much longer. Um, in fact, um, between six months and a year or longer. And our staff there were, um, you know, taking on very, very large caseloads of families who needed very intensive services. So our grant actually helps um, transition families who have been with us the longest um, into a, a less intensive type of service through the partnership and to really become self-sufficient. Um, we're finding that, um, you know, that a lot of our students have a lot of anxiety. Um, there, We have very high truancy rates in our school, especially um, since, since COVID. And so our project is really focused on that reducing truancy because we know when when students are not in school, you know, there's there's other issues that happen in the community. Um, so we are, um, you know, engaging the student and their family to come back to school to get connected to resources and really work with their families um, to support kind of the uh, whole wraparound supports for them. This, the, our project will, is funding a clinician for the partnership, a transition clinician, as well as um, family resource coordinators who are um, located in our schools that serve our neediest um, student populations. And they're going to really continue to work with families and um, just build networks for them um, so that they get support. So that's us in a nutshell. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, and then now our friends from Chester Community Charter School. We call them our friends because they are part of uh, a cohort of TTA sites where we've been serving since 2000, I think 2019. So we're excited to have them on uh, on this grant program as well. Yvette, how are you? Welcome. Hi, to hello, this new James. Program. Three more years. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yvette Houston. I am the grant writer and project uh, director or manager rather for Chester Community Charter School. Um, also, the author and des a desire of the project project design that we're going to talk to you about today. Um, I do have a few members from our project team on the call, and you all will hear from them shortly, because I do really believe that they are the best people to talk about the successes of the programs, um, just be, to highlight them because they're on the ground um, as the frontline implementers. So I just want to introduce them quickly. Um, I have Sarah Frederick. She is from our uh, Upland campus uh, at the K-5 level. And then we also have, I think, Mr. Bobo, Mr. Stephen Bobo is here, and he is a credible messenger with our Violence Free Zone program, uh, which is at the middle school campus. So very quickly, just to give you all um, a scope of our school, we are a uh, K-8 public charter school. We're one of the largest charter schools in the state of Pennsylvania. We are situated, um, as you can assume, in Chester, Pennsylvania, but we're right outside of the greater Philadelphia area. We also have a unique dynamic in the fact that we have students who are um, both local residents of 
the Chester and surrounding communities, but we also have students who are um, recruited from the greater Philadelphia area. So we do have students who are bust into us from Philadelphia and those uh, surrounding communities as well. So we have an interesting dynamic. And I think that that uh, model presents both challenges as well as opportunities. Um, so we'll probably get into that as well. Hi, Scott. <laughs> I'm sorry, Scott Pressure. She was one of our program officers. It's good to, to, good to hear from you. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to mention is that we're like a, uh, I guess people call this a mini university. So we are set up as um, we're one school, but we uh, have nine buildings across four campuses. Okay, so we have an east campus um, for K-5, a west campus for K-5, an upland campus for K-5, and then we have an Aston campus, which is solely dedicated to our middle school uh, student population. Uh, but again, we're one school and we have many campuses and buildings uh, across the entire uh, institution and each building is led by a principal and a uh, team of leaders and obviously teachers and staff. Um, our student population for this grant, uh, it's pretty much a school wide grant. We do have some interventions that are specific to K-5, uh, one of those interventions being the bounce back uh, trauma trauma-informed program, which you'll hear a little bit more about um, from Sarah. And we also have uh, interventions that are specific for our middle school population, specifically our youth courts program, which is a restorative justice program. Our students really enjoy it. They do very well in that program. Um, we have a new program that's coming up once we actually launch and start implementing that grant next academic school year. That's called Mock Trial. That's um, pretty much a progressive step up from the youth courts program, and it's going to give our students an opportunity to also compete um, with other middle school, excuse me, middle school students throughout the region. Um, so that's a whole different skill set that they're going to be introduced and exposed to. We also have the um, uh, SSET program, which is the, I guess, sister program to, to Bounce Back. So it too is a trauma a trauma informed um, program, but it's just for the middle school student population and we have Violence Free Zone. So Violence Free Zone program is one of our veteran programs. It's been around since, um, like James had referenced earlier, since our initial grant application with OJJDP, which was in about 2019. Uh, so Mr. Bobo is gonna speak very briefly on the Violence Free Zone program, just give you some highlights. Uh, just wanted to basically give you all like a scope, high level detail scope of our school, our student demographic and population we're serving and just mention our programs because those are the strategies we're using to help fill the gaps and um, you know support the, the needs that we have in our school. So I'd like to turn it over now um, very, very briefly to Mr. Bobo. <laughs> um, if you could give us about six, maybe 60 seconds or less highlights of the Violence Free Zone Program. Thank you. Thank you, James. Peace and blessing to all. First and foremost, I would like to say congratulations to that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So our Thank Violence you. Free Zone Program is, is um, our way of uniting our children that, um, that undergo a lot of turmoil and tra tra trauma from home and in the, in the, the, the community to self help themselves sit here and communicate with us. And then as we communicate with us, with them, we teach them a way to uh, identify their, their, their triggers, some of their issues, uh, understanding the trust and the truth that lies within themselves. Uh, what else can I say? How to identify and address the uh, cycles of violence and how to alleviate it and walk away from them instead of engaging in them on a day-to-day -day basis that they may see uh, um, in their neighborhoods and in the cultural climates of the schools. And then also how we have a peace circle that really works very well here, all right, because our students get have the opportunity to sit amongst each other and tell their truth with each other without knowing none of them walking away being angry because they didn't get a chance to express themselves. And then with my class, there's no wrong answers. There's only positive solutions. So if we can't sit down and talk as adults and young adults, which they are, and they're learning to become younger and stronger and more vibrant adults, they, they gravitate towards this program. A lot of them, the majority of them love it. 60 seconds or less. That's that's it. Thank you. Uh, we're we're really 
pushing it, but um, Sarah, if you can just zip in and zip out and then we're done. Yeah, like 10 seconds. Excellent. Sarah, are you here? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, awesome. So just a little overview of the Bounce Back and Asset programs. Um, they are group counseling programs that take place over 10 sessions. And those are offered by our school counselors. Uh, social workers jump in in case the school counselor is unable to provide the program. Um, but regardless, someone who is certified in, uh, with a school, uh, school counseling or some mental health degree is providing that 10 session small group. Um, and it's, it's based in cognitive behavioral therapy. So um, it's structured on this triangle of thoughts, feelings, and actions and how they're connected. Um, so that I'm students sorry, can gonna, take situations. Sorry, 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 I'm going to have to cut you off because no we're problem. way past time. We have three okay, more Okay, thank you. They all have time to, to be able to get in here. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. No, no that's fine. Thank you guys for participating. All right, next from Chicago, SGA Youth and Family Services. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with everyone. And I'll just say that our team talked after our last orientation and was feeling really energized and invigorated by being part of this community of practice. We're really happy to be here. And uh, as everyone is introducing themselves, we're taking little notes and uh, thinking about, oh, that's a good idea. So it's really great to be um, in this community. Uh, my name is Melissa Moore. I am the manager of um, behavioral health programs at SGA Youth and Family Services. We are located in the city of Chicago. Our program is called TRIP, which stands for the Tilden Resiliency Intervention Program. The T in TRIP for Tilden is Tilden High School, where we will be um, targeting our efforts in this program. Um, Tilden High School is a Chicago public school located on the south side of Chicago. Um, I am joined today by my colleagues, um, Brandon Williams. He is Hi, our, uh, yep, he's our program coordinator, uh, serving as our liaison to school administration, working on developing a network of community partners and collaborators. And as someone mentioned earlier, uh, building those relationships. He spent most of his time uh, thus far really kind of just getting out into the community discovering you know, who's around and who our partners can and should be, and just doing all the networking um, that goes along with that relationship building. Um, and we certainly appreciate his efforts in that. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Madison Bishop, who's on our team. She is our behavioral health clinician, uh, whose focus is promoting social emotional learning, providing counseling and crisis intervention services and conducting teacher wellness and resilience groups. Um, and we're very fortunate to have a clinician on our team. Uh, Brandon and Madison are both primarily housed within Tilden High School, which is a really nice collaboration to have. Um, I will say right off the bat that Tilden High School principal, assistant principal, social worker, have really been engaging with us and really collaborative and have provided a space within the school. Um, so it's a really, really great um, partnership that we're, that we're starting. Uh, we also are currently recruiting for a violence prevention specialist. So we, that will complete our team once we uh, recruit and find that person. Um, so the role of the violence prevention specialist in our program um, will be to provide direct prevention education and intervention services, work with teachers to implement positive classroom strategies and participate in the school safety strategic um, planning process. So a big role that we have yet to fill, but we are certainly engaging in efforts to identify um, someone to fill, fill those shoes. I also wanted to share a little bit about SGA because I think that it's an important component of who we are. Um, SGA really believes in community collaboration and partnership as really the only way to effectively serve Chicagoland youth and families and to ensure that their needs are met. Um, SGA has a long history of participating in and building community coalitions to leverage resources and engage community input, input into program design. Um, 
SGA leads positive change for children and families in Chicagoland's most challenged and underserved neighborhoods. Um, nearly half of Chicagoans are considered low income or are living in, the, in poverty, uh, residing in high violent crime neighborhoods. SGA is one of the largest human service agencies in Chicago, um, and we use individualized, strength-based, trauma-informed approaches. Um, we really are looking at tackling cycles of poverty and replacing that with cycles of opportunity. Um, seeking to create sustainable communities, um, working in various different programs across the agency. Um, I wanted to uh, save some time to talk a little bit more specifically about TRIP, which is the program that we're implementing here. So it's serving students, families, and faculty of Tilden High School in Chicago's um, Fuller Park community. Um, our purpose is to reduce and prevent violence within the school, create a positive learning environment and address the impact of trauma and build resilience among students, teachers, administrators, and parents. Um, a little bit about Fuller Park, where this high school is situated. It's ranked among Chicago's most crime-ridden neighborhoods per capita, yet it lies just a, a mere five miles outside of Chicago's well-known downtown area. Two um, more seconds, okay, Melissa? Okay, wrapping up. Um, just a little bit of data. Um, Tilden has 30% of students who have IEPs, which is double the rate of IEPs in the school district and the state. 47% of students are Hispanic, 40% uh, African American, 10% white, 96% low income, and 20% are homeless. So that's the demographics that we're working with uh, within the school. And then just to wrap up, we do have three major strategies that we're using to um, do this work. One is to build a community-wide resilience network. Uh, we had our first community coalition meeting yesterday, which feels really good to get that going. Um, our second strategy is to build a school safety strategic plan. And then the third is to use an evidence-based uh, trauma-informed resilience-oriented schools um, toolkit, which I think someone else is, uh, is using as well. So I will end there and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Melissa. Um, all right, let's try self-awareness and recovery in Sacramento. I'm not sure, I haven't been able to connect with them, so I'm not sure if they're gonna be here. Going once, twice, all right. How about the independent school district number 625 in St. Paul, Minnesota? Hello, St. Paul. No? All right. Well, look at that. We just uh, saved ourselves 10 minutes. And just real quick, in case you all happen to show up late, um, Manatee County, Brandonton, are you here? Or the Shoshone Paiute tribe in Nevada? All right, so we have four more sites uh, that will eventually have them uh, share a little bit about themselves at some point. Um, but what that does do is, is give us uh, about nine minutes of time. So one thing I think I forgot to mention as far as the TTA offerings um, is that we're going to be holding a, uh, a cohort convening um, in this fall, probably October or um, November. Um, so at this, at, for the convening, we'll probably be asking, uh, probably three members of your team. Typically it might be, um, you know, somebody from the school, somebody from a community-based partner, um, uh, and then, you know, could be, you know, uh, somebody from the family or, or resident, um, to join us, uh, where we'll be able to connect with each other, learn from each other. Um, have some of the subject matter experts there to, to provide some, some tools and trainings. Um, so we'll be in touch with you about that. Um, we're going to leave uh, about five minutes now for just general questions and answers. So if anybody wants to pop up with either um, uh, by raising your hand or if you just want to come up mute, um and and say something i'll i'll just i'll give maybe two folks 
one minute each, and and then we'll we'll wrap things up. So does anybody want to be one of those two? Hey, Sky, I see you talking, but I can't hear you for some reason. And you're not. Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, yeah, the, the double mute never gets old, right? Um, <laughs> but I just want to say that you really must have been that thorough, right? I think people are pretty. Uh, I, I just I just wanted to say, and I still we want to welcome questions, but I'm just super excited by the uh, level of uh, interest and uh that the just the resources that are being plugged into um you, you know these schools and communities that are really community led and evidence based exactly what we were looking for when we developed the solicitation so i just think it's really exciting and i think this future of this cohort is really going to drive a lot of our work as we move forward over the course of the next several years so just wanted to share that James, guess what? I think you're on mute. I think you're doing it now. This is great. It's, Bingo. I'm vindicated. Bingo. <laughs> um, uh, anybody from any of the sites want to share thoughts, comments, reaction from this orientation? All right. You guys were, were so active and engaging last week. Uh, I know we're getting towards the end of the week. Um, just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for taking three hours uh, out of your schedule over the past two weeks um, to join us. Um, we are going to make this well worth your time. Um, we're going to do everything we can as a cohort and as a, as a TTA provider um, to uh, help your students be able to um, you know, learn in a safe environment both in schools and in the community. Um, we have a, a survey tool um, that I put in the, the link um, that I would love for you to, to fill out. It's a, a very quick, um, short survey. Um, if you don't wanna use the link, you can check out this, this QR code and do it that way. Um, Scott, it looks like you have one more thing that you wanna say, so go ahead. I, I, can you hear me, James? I mean, yeah, yep. Yeah, I just I just saw Anthony put in a question in about seeing that there's a second cohort of FY23 solicitation that's out and that if this cohort was eligible to apply. There's no prohibition against you applying under the FY23. I will say, however, that uh, uh, I think a couple of things would need to happen for it to be um, competitive. First off, you know, we were able to fund 20, what, 20, 22, 23 sites? Yeah, um, under this cohort, under the FY22 cohort, I think we uh, have funds to support 21 under the FY23 cohort. Given that you guys are just getting started, I think, that, you know, it may be, make you a little less competitive if you are looking to apply again, given that you will have little to no kind of results to kind of report. And I think they want to we want to make sure that we do provide resources uh, a little more broadly. But again, not a prohibition, but you would definitely want to make sure that you're dealing with a very different audience and in no way would your um, proposed uh, project design be duplicative in any manner. That would be an important piece if you were to consider going down that road, just to share. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and if there are no other comments, We'll, we'll, we'll end now. Uh, I don't see anybody raising their hand or adding more comments, but Stacy and Pam, thank you for thanking the cohort. I appreciate that. Um, and we'll be in touch with you soon. So uh, stay tuned for emails and conversations and um, three years of, of really great collaboration. Take care, y'all. Thank you all. Thank you, James. Yeah. Bye.